everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Robin. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Robin Goldberg. I am a nutritionist with my own company, Robin Goldberg Nutrition and Wellness. Um, I also wrote a cookbook called Hidden Veggies. So filled with easy, fun, healthy recipes, all with hidden veggies, perfect for that picky eater or anyone just looking to get in some more veggies in their day. Um, for more information about me or my services or to find my cookbook, go to my website, robingoldbergnutrition.com. Uh, today we're going to cook together and we are going to make a healthy spaghetti squash pad thai. I know that sounds weird, but I promise it's delicious, um, nutritious, filled with lots of great uh, vegetables, some good vitamins. And I'm going to make mine today with some shrimp. Um, you can make yours with chicken, you can do tofu, whatever you really prefer. Um, but I decided to make mine with shrimp today. So if you want to cook along, what you will need for the sauce we need some dates. So if you're using these like small dates, I would say use four dates. If you use those larger medjool dates, just two is fine. Um, I'm also going to soften my dates um, in some hot water. So I just have some hot water boiling. We want to make it easier to blend in with our recipe. So I'm just going to pour some hot water into a cup and we're just going to let those dates soak for a few minutes. Just to soften up. We've got our hot water. I'm just gonna dump my dates right in and we'll let those soften up while we get everything else ready. So, what else do we need? We will be needing some peanut butter because you can't have a good pad thai without some peanut butter. You can also use almond butter, you can use any kind of nut butter you like. I'm gonna use peanut butter. Um, we need some rice vinegar. We need juice of a lime. Um, we need coconut aminos um, or soy sauce. Again, I prefer the coconut aminos. It's made from coconut, um, has more nutrients and less sodium. So I say give it a try, but you can definitely use soy sauce if you prefer. Um, we also need some fish sauce and a little bit of sesame oil. It gives it that great like toasted sesame flavor. We are going to grate up a little bit of ginger. Here's the whole ginger root. So I'll show you again how we grate up some ginger. Um, three cloves of garlic, and a touch of red pepper flakes. So that's what we need for the sauce. Um, for the pad thai, we need a spaghetti squash, an onion, two cloves of garlic, two eggs, um, which can, if you're trying to make this vegan, you can leave the eggs out, that's totally fine. Um, again, I'm using shrimp. We need a bell pepper and some carrots. Um, so that's really everything we need for today. So we're going to start by prepping our spaghetti squash and getting that in the oven because it'll take about 30 minutes to cook. So we're going to go ahead and get this ready. I'm going to show you how we do this. So first, we need a good knife. All right, so my oven is preheating to 400 degrees right now um, while we go ahead and cut up this spaghetti squash. So what we do for spaghetti squash, we're going to chop off both of the ends. One end. Ignore my knife. That's the best. All right, chop off with the end so that way we can stand it up straight. It'll be a lot easier to cut right down the center. So be very careful. You just want to cut straight through, right down the center. Just like that. All right. Spaghetti squash is cut in half. So now you see, just like every other squash, there are a bunch of seeds in here. So we're going to just take a spoon, scoop out all the seeds. Very, very easy. And then we're just gonna season this with just a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper. Put it on our lined baking sheet and bake it in the oven for about 30 minutes. You just want it to be, you can look at it, it'll get a little bit golden and you can kind of stab it with a fork and make sure it's soft, but it should take about 30 minutes depending on the size of your squash. So I'm going to finish de-seeding mine and finish prepping it. All right, so our spaghetti squash is in the oven. Again, I put it uh, flush side down and we're cooking it for about 30 minutes and then we'll check it. So in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and make our sauce. So I'm using my little mini food processor right here. You can use a blender or whatever works for you, but this is great to make the sauce for me. So we have our 
dates that have been soaking. So they've been soaking long enough. So I'm just gonna pull them out of the hot water, add these into my food processor. All right, and now let's get the rest of the ingredients. So now we have a fourth of a cup of creamy peanut butter. Um, you, again, you can use almond butter, cashew butter, sunflower butter if you need to make it nut free, whatever works for you. Um, I am using peanut butter, so we're gonna add that in. All right, and now we have our um, coconut aminos. So we are going to add three tablespoons of coconut aminos. So there is one, two, oops, and three. All right, and now we need our rice vinegar. So we need two tablespoons of rice vinegar. And you can use apple cider vinegar if you don't have rice vinegar, that works as well. So two tablespoons of rice vinegar. Um, we also need three, uh, two teaspoons of our fish sauce. So here's our fish sauce. We're gonna do two tablespoons of fish sauce. That's one. All right, and then we need a tablespoon of our sesame oil. And this really adds a great flavor, so I highly recommend trying it. Tablespoon's not that much oil, um, but it really does give it that nice toasted sesame. It really brings out a nice flavor. Um, all right, so we're gonna do one tablespoon of that. Pour that right in. And then we also have our three cloves of garlic and about a one inch piece of ginger. So I already kind of roughly chopped mine. So you just basically though to do ginger, you take a spoon and you can just easily scrape the skin right off. Um, if you keep your ginger in the freezer, which I typically do, this was fresh ginger, but I normally keep mine in the freezer. You can also, it's very easy to scrape it off with a knife. And then you can use a grater to grate it, but since we're putting it in our food processor, I didn't go through all of that and I'm just roughly chopped it. So this is about an inch piece of ginger and three cloves of garlic we're gonna add in. Um, they don't have to be chopped up too much because we're gonna put them in the food processor. So that is really easy. And then we are going to add the juice of a lime. So we want about a tablespoon, which depending on how juicy your lime is, should be about a lime. Um, so I have an extra in case I'm not getting enough, but this one's actually a pretty juicy lime. So I think we will get a good tablespoon from this lime. And then to add a little bit of a kick, I'm gonna add just a smidge of crushed red pepper. Um, use as little bit or as you know, much as you like. I don't want it to be too spicy. Um, but that is everything that goes into our mixer and I'm just going to blend it up. All right, so our sauce is made. Look at how good that looks, nice and creamy. Delicious. All right, so now that our sauce is ready, we're just gonna set it to the side until we're ready to eat it. So that means now we gotta get ready to make everything else. So right now I have one onion that I am just sauteing a little bit. We're gonna get it nice and golden. We're gonna let this cook. And then we are going to add in some ginger. Sorry, we're gonna add in some garlic and then some egg before we add everything else. So we're gonna let this cook for a couple minutes, takes about five minutes for them to get nice and golden before we start adding everything else. All right, so our onions have been cooking for about five minutes. They're looking nice and translucent, so they're about ready. So now we are going to add in our garlic. I chopped up two cloves of garlic here, and we're just gonna let that cook in 30 seconds, not that long. We just really want flavors to release. Get those nice and smell aroma coming up. It smells really good. So let that cook for a second. While we're letting that cook, we have our eggs here. I cracked two eggs into this bowl. I'm just gonna scramble them up. Nice and light scramble on them. And if you're using chicken, you could have cooked the chicken first and then like taking it out of the pan and removed it while you made everything else. Um, because shrimp doesn't take that long to cook, I'm gonna actually cook it in with everything. But if you are using chicken or you know another meat, 
I would recommend cooking that in this pan first and then taking it out and moving it, setting it on the side of the plate, and you'll add it back in once everything is cooked. Um, all right, so our garlic has been cooking in here with our onions. Everything smells delicious. So we're just gonna kinda like scoop the onions and the garlic over the side a little bit right here and leave space right here for our egg. Just gonna let that, pour that in. And we're just gonna let it cook a minute, sort of like an omelet, so I'm not gonna really over scramble it. Um, we're gonna let it cook up for a couple of minutes and then we'll try to like flip it a little bit, make it more of an omelet style. So we'll let that cook now. While this is cooking, I already prepped my shrimp, so it is peeled and deveined and ready to go. I've sliced up my bell pepper, really thin, like julienne slices, really thin here. Um, and then cheated by buying carrots that are already grated. Um, just seemed a little easier today. So you can also just grate your own carrot if you want, but felt like buying the already grated ones. So as soon as this egg is ready, we will add in the rest of our ingredients, get all of that cooking, and then we add in our sauce. All right, so our egg is pretty much basically cooked through. So now we're just gonna sort of like flip it a little bit, move it to the side, break it up. Kind of want some like bigger pieces, so it looks kind of like an omelet. So move it to the side and we'll break it up as we continue cooking. So now I'm going to go ahead and add in my shrimp. And we just let the shrimp cook, it's about three minutes per side. Shrimp is pretty easy to tell when it's cooked because it turns pink. So I'm gonna let that cook about three minutes per side as I kind of break up the egg a little bit in there with the onions. I'm trying to keep some chunks in there. And then as soon as the shrimp is cooked, uh, we'll move that to the side, add in our veggies, let everything cook, and then add in our sauce. All right, so our shrimp is nice and cooked. You can see how quickly it all turned pink. Everything looks Great. Just gonna move again, move that over the side, make a little room just to get these vegetables cooked up a little bit. So I have one bell pepper. You can use any color pepper you want, and I love the red to add that little nice punch of color. And then about a cup of shredded carrots. Nothing has to be measured exactly, however much you want to use, but about a cup. And we're just gonna let this all in here now, let the carrots and the peppers cook a little bit. We can mix everything all back together. And then we're gonna to top with our sauce. So I think our spaghetti squash is also just about done. So once we let this all cook up for, you know, two more minutes basically, just wanna get the peppers and carrots cooked a little bit. Uh, I'm going to add in some sauce and then we'll pull out the spaghetti squash and we'll get that added in too. So, as you can see, this has been super quick, super easy. It smells amazing, wish you could smell this. Um, but we'll get everything added back in. All right, so our peppers and carrots have been cooking for a minute or two. We just want them to get soft. You can cook them as much as you want, but the more you cook them, obviously, the softer they're gonna get. So I'm adding, keeping them a little bit of a bite to them, a little bit of a crunch. So now is when we're going to add in our delicious peanut sauce. I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in here. We're gonna mix everything together. So all the flavors get blended, everything gets nice and coated. And then once this is all mixed in, we are going to add in our spaghetti squash, which I'll show you, super simple. All right, so look how delicious. Nice and creamy, super healthy. Some good healthy fats like the peanut butter, but really good for you. Um, Coconut aminos, some good spices and flavorings, really delicious. Lots of vegetables in here, so good. Look at how awesome that looks, so nice and creamy. So like all of that sort of get coated. And now I'm going to add my spaghetti squash. So as you can see, the spaghetti squash is done. The spaghetti squash is so easy. I started scraping it a little bit already. So basically all you do is you take a fork, and you just scrape it, and it turns into little spaghetti strands. So that's all we're gonna do, a little bit hot. 
probably could let it cool a little bit, but I'm not that patient. So I'm just gonna take a napkin and we're just going to scrape the spaghetti right into our pan. See, this becomes, I don't know if you can see, but we're getting like just noodles, basically. Looks just like spaghetti. So we get all of this scraped in and then we're gonna give it a nice mix so everything is nice and coated and then dinner's ready. All right, look at how nice and creamy and delicious this looks. Everything is added in, all mixed together, and now we're just ready to plate it up. So we're gonna do some big scoops on here. I don't know, sure, make sure we go with everything. Now, look at that, look how delicious. You can see it still makes nice spaghetti strands. And then you can top this, you can put a little scallions on top, you can put a little crushed peanuts or some cashews, you know, kind of make it a little bit fancy looking. But that's it, dinner is served. Healthy, delicious, full of protein, full of vitamins. We have our spaghetti squash, shrimp, um, the peppers and carrots, and then our sauce was super simple with some just good, uh, peanut butter and some good seasonings. Really, really delicious, easy weeknight meal, something I think your whole family will like. Um, give it a try, let me know what you think. Again, my name is Robin Goldberg with Robin Goldberg Nutrition Wellness. You can check out my website for more information about me and my programs um, and my cookbook, robingoldbergnutrition.com. Uh, thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any, any of my recipes. Uh, thanks again.